Okay, so in the last video, we talked about kind of my thoughts on AI art. Well, regardless of whether you like it or not, it is here to stay. Today, I wanna to give you five ways that you can use AI art to either promote a business or to start one. So the first way is for freelance work. Now, you may have heard of sites like Fiverr.com where you can pay someone to create something for you. Uh, maybe it's a video or audio or a picture or something like that. Well, there's a lot of gigs that you can kind of utilize uh, these AI generated images for to create gigs on Fiverr very easily. So just imagine that someone would pay you for the images you created through AI. Now you could list that they were created by AI or not, but basically you would create things for them and you would just charge a price. Uh, a good example of this is, you know, YouTube channel banners. You could charge uh, somebody to create those images for the YouTube banners or maybe it's uh, ebook covers. You could create ebook covers using those AI generated images as backgrounds for those images. Now, AI isn't quite to the point where it's really good with text. Text is actually probably one of the worst aspects of AI art, but you could always take that image that you've created and use it as a background for an ebook cover or a channel banner or a profile picture, something like that. So you can always use these AI generated images to help you get a shortcut in doing freelance work. Another thing you could use AI art for is stock photos. Now, as far as I know, there's no restrictions on using AI art for stock photo websites, but I know that it is a little difficult to get into sites like iStock or Shutterstock. So it may be a little more difficult to get into that. You could always list the images on Pixels or Pixabay, but the thing with Pixels and Pixabay is that those are free sites, so people are not required to pay for those images. Now, they could always donate money to you, so if you generated a, quite a few images, you could always upload all of them in the hopes that people will donate to you. But if you could get into some stock photo sites, you might be able to make some royalties from that. But I will say that with the advent of all of these images, that one may be kind of uh, going away in the future. It's just a suggestion though. All right, let me give you a third way that you can make money with AI art. NFTs. Now, I know, I know, I'm wearing my Dogecoin shirt. So before you rule this out, just know that NFTs, while dead and maybe not popular anymore, they could make a resurgence. And you never know what the future holds. I mean, they kind of died off and you know, they were super overhyped last year, but that doesn't mean that they can't come back. Now, I'm not telling anyone to go out and make NFTs, but if you were ever looking to get into the NFT, NFT space, this is an easy way to do it. I mean, you literally just have the software create some images for you and you can literally use that prompt over and over and over again and get unique ones every time and then take them to a site like OpenSea.io and there you go, you've got NFT art. And even if you just wanted to make them to say that you have NFTs, well, I mean, it's an easy way to do it. So I know it's uh, the hype has died and maybe NFTs will never come back and maybe they will. But if you were ever gonna get into it, this would probably be the time because the fees for everything are a lot less now that the hype has died and a lot of the prices have come down. So just, uh, just a thought. All right, let's talk about the fourth way you could use AI art to promote or create a business. Okay, so the fourth method actually is pretty cool. And I think that it's going to be very beneficial to people who maybe already have an existing business or something they want to promote. And that is to use Instagram with these AI generated images to promote a website or a service you already have. Because an Instagram account is easy to set up. It's cheap and it's, uh, it, well, it's free. <laughs> it's about as cheap as it gets. So what I did, and I'm going to show some footage right here on the screen. I 
created a brand new Instagram account. And then I uploaded some of those AI images that I created through Midjourney and posted them to Instagram to get some traffic to another link. Uh, so I promoted my original uh, profile or I actually promoted my book in the link. And it's just a really easy, cheap way to use that art. So I think that Instagram is actually a great way to to kind of harvest some free traffic using AI images. They're very simple to create and you just have to post it with a few hashtags and there you go. Anybody that finds your art can click on the link and go to whatever it is, the website that you want them to go to. Now, if you use this in conjunction with the last thing that I'm about to suggest to you, you could actually create a business overnight, as in you could be doing this today or tomorrow and already have something tangible to promote. And if you really hit it hard and created a ton of images and uploaded them to what I'm about to show you, well, you could actually have an AI art business in a matter of days. So what is that last thing? Okay, so the last way that I wanna share with you to use this AI generated art is for print on demand products. And so with print on demand products, you basically, you upload your images and then those images get printed on to things like canvas prints or backpacks or towels or mouse pads, all of these different things, but only when a customer orders them. And I've used many sites before. I've used Fine Art America, Society6, but the best one I think to use is Redbubble. So the way that this would work is that you would take that image that you've created with your AI and you would upload it to Redbubble. And then on that site, all you would have to do is just upload your image and then it creates products for you. And then when someone orders those products, they just print it on demand when they order it and ship it out. It's perfect. You get a commission of the item when it sells and you can upload it, as far as I know, as many items as you want, as many pictures as you want. And so with this in mind, you could theoretically take those images from Mid Journey, create some cool images, you take your best ones and the small versions that it creates, you use on Instagram as promotion. Then you take higher quality versions of those images, and I'll explain how in a minute, and you put those on Redbubble and you create items out of it. And then you promote that Redbubble account with your Instagram account. And so your Redbubble account would kind of look like this after you've uploaded some designs. So this is an example of the Redbubble account that I have that I created um, with this alternate name. And so basically, once you have this account, well, you use those images on Instagram, you put the link to your Redbubble account in your Instagram bio, and then you upload high quality versions to Redbubble to be printed. And you just do this over and over and over and over and over again. It's such a simple business model. And, it, and if you're really into the AI art and the generation of it, well, it's a perfect business model because it costs you very, very little. Uh, you would only have to pay for Midjourney and the other service I'm about to mention. So coming back to what I was just saying about the, the scale of the images, when you use Midjourney, you can set up kind of the aspect ratio of the images that you generate. But what you cannot set up is how big they get. So Mid Journey does cap out at a certain size. I think it's around 2000 pixels. I'm not 100% sure. So the problem with this is that might be fine for Instagram pictures, but when you're trying to upload it to a site, say Redbubble, well, low resolution images tend to only fit on small products. So you can't do larger products that are going to make you more per commission. So how do you get around this? How do you fix this? Well, once you have that image, 
you need to take it to an upscaler. So the way that upscalers works is you upload an image and then it takes a pixel from that image and it basically puts four of those pixels in its place and it expands that pixel into multiple pixels of that same thing. And it just does this for the whole image. And if you were to try to do this on your own, say in Photoshop or GIMP, where you uploaded an image and then you just kind of resized it, well, if you just resize an image without upscaling it, you might get the resolution, but then it's gonna look all, it's gonna look pixelated because you're just taking that image and stretching it out. You're not actually making it bigger. But an upscaler isn't the same thing. So upscalers use AI to take a pixel and then make, make all the pixels around it the same pixel. And it does that for all of the pixels on the image so that it literally does become a bigger image. And with some of the upscalers out there, there are free ones and there are paid ones. And there's one that I use called Image8. And I'm gonna link to it in the description area below. It does cost, but it's like $10 for 100 images or something around that ballpark. So you can use this upscaler to then take those images that you got from Midjourney that were capped out in resolution and then upscale them to say seven, 8,000 pixel resolution so that when you take them to Redbubble, it opens up way more options for you in the things that you can print. And what this is going to allow you to do is you're going to be able to sell more products with those images and make more money because generally the bigger the product, say it's a blanket or a shower curtain, you make more money off of those bigger items than you do with the smaller items. And here's the thing about Redbubble. Redbubble is really cool because you can upload a ton of designs but Redbubble also has a lot of traffic, it has a lot of visitors. And so with Redbubble, I looked at some of these other websites that kind of do the same thing with print on demand. And Redbubble seems to me to be by far and away the largest. In fact, my account, the one I showed you, a brand new account already had people liking and following that account within the first few days and I didn't promote it at all. So just to put it in your head, uh, you can make money with this. In fact, I sold some throw pillows on an old account where I was doing something similar, but it was before AI. So I would take stock photo images for free, and then I would just kind of manipulate them, and then I would make a design, and then I would put those on uh, different items. Well, even not promoting that and forgetting about it for a, about a year or two, I still actually sold some throw pillows off of it. I forgot I even had the account. Now think about that. If if I can make, you know, if I can sell some throw pillows and make like $8 on an account I forgot about, how much more do you think that you could set up an account and just go crazy with generating a ton of AI images, having the rights to them, upscaling them, and then putting them into Redbubble and just filling out this entire portfolio that you can, you know, even if you're not making a ton of sales, it's free to do. Very, very low cost business for all of it. You just pay for mid journey and you'd pay for the upscaler and that's really it. So for about $20, $25 a month, you can get you know 100 to 200 images that are really high quality. Now the upscaler does charge per time you upscale. So if you take an image and upscale it a couple times, every time you upscale that same image, it does cost a credit. So just to, just to be 100% 100 transparent. But ultimately, that's it. Those are the five methods I wanted to share with you. And the reason I bring all this up is because, again, we can like or hate AI art, but I think it's here to stay. And you can take those images and you could start a business tonight, tomorrow, you know, in the next few days for very little money. And if you have a genuine interest in it, then you could technically make this work. I mean, what's stopping you from uploading 100 or 500 or 1,000 images, especially if you find a niche that people really like and you start generating a ton of images in that niche and really capitalize on it. Uh, ultimately, that's that's about it. That's all I've got. Uh, I will put the links to the different things that I've mentioned in this uh, in the description area below. I will link uh, both the AI generation softwares. I will link the upscaler, and I will also link to Redbubble as well in this area. Uh, but ultimately, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you have any questions or 
you know, any comments or if you just enjoyed this video, please let me know in the description or the comments, I guess. And uh, I really appreciate your time. And let me know if you enjoy these kind of different videos that aren't about painting. But uh, I thank you and I uh, just hope you have an awesome rest of your day, evening, whatever it is. Take care, guys. Bye.